All right, lads. And so now we have the patch notes for the upcoming event, which is dropping in less than a day. Honestly, I've already covered this in my last video. And so if you guys have not checked that out yet, like go see it. I cover off the event mechanics, the efficiencies, which stages to farm. But what I was really looking forward to for this patch was what they're actually going to call the event because there were two people calling it two different things. We had Astral Mirror as well as Starlight Fantasy. And it looks like Yostar has gone ahead and named this event Phantom Mirror of Star stars, which both were kind of close. However, again, today we are not going to be focusing on the event. Like I said, I already covered it. And instead, we will be looking at the characters that are coming with Phantom Mirror of Stars. Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Nana, Metamorphosis, and uh, what's her name? I think they named her really weird, Akarante or something. In CN, she was known as Aelin, but it seems that we will be getting Akarante. And so in this video, I do want to talk about these three characters, should you pull for them, but really like a more in-depth analysis, because I think a lot of people so far in the game have been like, okay, well, I'm just going to put on like a tank, a compeller, aka healer, or like both, and then potentially potentially a DPS as well, right? So unfortunately, there's not been too much thought in terms of like meta and team comp. And of course, if you guys are not meta slaving, like honestly, I'm not really meta slaving in this game. And I am pleasantly surprised to find that I can clear a lot of content without doing so. Then go ahead and roll for your waifus or for your desired characters. I cannot stop you. Nobody can stop you and nobody should. However, if you do have the chains, the shackles of meta around your neck and you just cannot escape it, let's start talking. All right. And so before we get into the evaluation itself, let me show you the three different characters. We've got Nana over here, which is Mercury Guardian. Mercury, remember, is blue. And then as for number two, we have Metamorphosis, who is a Salt Stone Compeller, which is actually an archetype that doesn't exist right now. And so Metamorphosis, as well as Nana, they are going to be on two separate banners. I believe Nana is going to be on the first banner for a week and the Metamorphosis for like the next week after that. And so my guys, here is proof of that. New Summon Pool, Dream Summon, 1123 to 1130, and then from 1130 to 12.7 for Nana and Metamorphosis morphoses respectively. And so the dream summon is a new type of summon. There will not be any pity carrying over from the awakening summons. And so if you guys do remember the awakening summons are those rotating banners that we've had for three days each. It started off with like Manir and then it went to Amanami and then Gurveig and then so forth. And then now we're up to Caledonia. And so just a reminder that those are like the awakening class summons. And so whilst they do share a pity, they will not be showing up again until this event finishes. And so for this one over here, Dream summons, dream summons appear when we have events such as this. And so what that means is that Nana is going to be on a fresh banner. You're not going to get any pity on her at all yet. And then whatever pulls you put into the Nana banner, they will transfer over to Metamorphosis. However, after the event is over, the pity counter on Metamorphosis, that will, that will stay. It still exists. It will just only come back when the next event comes. And so please don't feel like your roles were kind of like useless or they just went into the trash. I mean, like, uh, sometimes you got a pity for Afflin and that's kind of anyway guys let's move on the last thing about the dream summons it's actually really important and it's that I believe Nana and Metamorphosis and all of the dream summons actually get added to the standard banner they get added to the permanent pool and so honestly that's really awesome because it means that you potentially have a chance to be spooked by them in a future banner all right and so guys I'm sorry to have bored you with all of those mechanics but it's actually really important especially from like a saving point of view but with that being said let's move on to the evaluations themselves okay Okay, here we go. So as always, shout out to Noctis for this spreadsheet because the spreadsheet is so freaking dank and then Chloe and Lancefield for this wiki over here. So starting off with Nana, as you can see, she is going to be a Mercury, aka Blue Protector. And so every time like a new character comes out, there are a few different things that we need to think about, right? And the first thing that comes to mind is always competitors. Who else competes for the spot? Now, generally speaking, from a meta point of view, we run one tank, one healer or compeller and a DPS. And so whilst DPS does have a little bit more of variety and healers actually because like so for example Manir you've got as a really really strong single target damage and then on the other hand we've got Ushpia over here who is awesome AOE utility in the stun as well damage as well so from that point of view they are kind of not competing right Manir and Ushpia and then we've got Gorveig over here who is a compeller a Mercury compeller which technically speaking would be competing with Amanami however Amanami is more of a traditional compeller whereas Gorveig is kind of like your transform gimmick it's a very very similar archetype to Ella. So as you can see, it gets like quite complex, right? And so like Nana, Protector, Blue, 
the first person that should come to mind is Aflin. And so if we have a quick look at Nana's kit, you will see that the kit is quite similar to Aflin's, if not like, not almost identical. So let's start it off with the skill one where she lowers her self damage taken. And so this is damage mitigation combined with the creating of a shield. And so Aflin has something very similar where her physical and magical defense goes up, but she is also getting a shield as well. And so both of them also have this redirection of damage, which I would, for like lack of a better term, call it a taunt. And so if I switch back over to Nana over here, you'll see she is also having a taunt as well for the next 10 seconds. And so it's at this point that you would be like, okay, well, they're kind of equal, right? Except for the fact that Aflin has a freaking on-demand two-second invulnerability. Like, oh, Jesus. And now you guys can understand why I went so deep for Aflin. That freaking hard pity. Anyway, continuing on. So for Aflin, we have the magic defense shred as well as 300% attack in magical damage. And then for the passive, we have auto cast Holy Radiance, which is is the chaos skill after taking damage 15 times and it goes up to eight times I think yeah eight times over here and so if I hop back over to here you'll see that Nana has like quite a similar skill deals 90 let's take the first percentage 90% magic damage five times to the entire enemy's team and so that's actually quite good it's more than Aflin 90% times five that's 450% at just the first level and on top of that she also dispels the enemy team but as for the magic defense reduction the defense down I would say that it is technically weaker than Aflin's. And so whilst the potential is really there because you see reduce the enemy's magic defense by 12%, uh, let me zoom in a bit, by 12% of Nana's magical defense stacking up to five times for 10 seconds. And so what this means is that the maximum effect of the magic defense down is 60%, which is pretty massive. However, it's a little bit hard to get to the maximum stacks like 60% because like every time Mirror of Accursed is triggered, it is only going to give you one stack. And so it being on a three cost chaos skill, you can see how it's a little bit hard to use. In the burst mode, it's actually going to be really cracked because you can get that 60% relatively fast. And on top of that, she is going to be dishing out the big damage, but then you're competing for the chaos slot in terms of when you're like dumping out all of your chaos points. However, the silver lining to this skill over here is actually the passive in which she is able to trigger the mirror of the accursed, that skill that we just talked about, at a 10 to 20% rate, which is quite good. And it's got a two second and CD, like, Honestly, I, I can see the 60% happening quite a fair bit. And so with all of that, you can see why like Nana is actually quite good, especially if you don't have the Aflin. However, for me personally, the utility in the two seconds immunity is just way too massive, especially because it's on demand. From a meta point of view, it just offers way too much. But like if we're talking like when you're fully busted, fully end game, and you're looking at like clearing out the, um what's it called? That boss timer mode thing. I can't remember what it's called because I don't do it too much. It's like evil within or something. But like that one, like you can see the DPS output of Nana is theoretically higher. And so in my opinion, I, she certainly does have a place. And so the last thing that I do want to mention is that I have been comparing Nana to Aflin, but probably the more like appropriate comparison is to Luan. Because if you have a look at the skill set, this is very much like the Arknights or the six star is just a better version of the five star. And I think that generally speaking, aside from like the small gimmicks, like it holds true. For Luan, she does have her magic shred on the skill skill two, and then she's also got like that redirection on the skill one. However, on top of all of that, she also has a rebirth. So technically, whilst they are kind of different, like they are all coming from the same archetype. And so from a team building point of view, it's pretty obvious like where Nana sits. If you don't have Aflin, you use Nana. If you don't have Luan, you use Nana. If you do have Luan, you still use Nana. And so should you roll for Nana? Honestly, between Metamorphosis and Nana, I love Nana's art like way more. And I love her sprite as well. It's really freaking cute but I love the metamorphosis sprite as oh my god that metamorphosis sprite is an 11 out of 10. My guys this is literally the epitome of simping for pixels. We have finally dropped no we have finally ascended to that level. All right and so speaking of metamorphosis let's have a quick look at her. So she is a salt stone compeller yellow compeller like I said if you look at her in the database or if you look for her archetype it just doesn't exist yet. Salt stone compeller and then boom no no search oh oh 
Anyway, so Metamorphosis, she has a pretty interesting mechanic, although it's not like crazy, crazy interesting. It's just very different. And so starting off with the skill one, Dependence 2 cost change mask and then recovers 120% of her attack in HP. But on top of that, you also gain an effect based on the current mask. So the previous effect remains for five seconds after changing the mask. So look at this. These are all of the different effects that we could get from the mask, anger, happy, and sad. So the first two may look like remarkably similar. You got all ally attack increase and then all damage increase. However, what you do need to know is that generally speaking in most of these games, attack is kind of like like pre multipliers and then for damage dealt that is like post multiplier actually that's one of your post multipliers such as like crit damage or potentially like elemental damage in which this game doesn't have unfortunately but yeah as you can see two out of three are offensive effects which is what we love to see otherwise dependence two cost order skill a very very cookie cutter for compellers all right and so after that we have emotional outburst so this is actually quite an expensive skill deals 240 percent attack in physical damage to all enemies and buffs effects from self increase by 100%. So I suspect like that is supposed to synergize with the mask effects over here. But not only that, you can see over here, soul gathering, she does have like a burst window of like every 10 seconds. And so honestly, that's pretty sick. But on top of that, next skill used has an increase in damage or healing. So very similar to the witch's, um, the, the flower skill. And so yeah, like I said, uh, unfortunately, we are starting to run out of time. But if you do want to compare this with anyone, she is compared to Tama. They are technically competing for a spot but some people do run two compellers and a dps and so you could definitely consider metamorphosis tama and like a dps like ella however from a meta standpoint i think the general consensus in the community is that you're going to be running tornell ella and metamorphosis me personally i think unless like the content is exceptionally hard you could technically replace the tornell with another compeller and so that is most certainly your two compeller and one dps setup all right and so just <laughs> One last ditch effort. I just love like metamorphosis, the sea and art. It's just freaking gorgeous. And I'm uh, I'm just so sad that they actually took this away because the sprite is still looking so freaking good. It might be one of my favorite sprites in the game. It's just like, uh, uh, I, I'm going to stop talking about it, guys. I'm just, I'm just going to chalk it up to personal preference. All right, so enough sulking and more content. Let's go over to Akarante, so this lady over here. And so as you can see, she is going to be a Mercury Mercury. Mage. Oh my god, what is going on? All right, Mercury Mage welfare unit can be bought and maxed out in the event shop. So that's referring to her crystal things. And so Mercury Mage, we kind of covered it at the very start. You're looking to compete with the Muneer for single target and the Ashpia as well as the Maya for like the AOE damage. And then on top of that, to compete with Ashpia, you need some level of utility. I'm talking the stuns. So like Pakane would compete. And then for Maya, I'm pretty sure it's a heal. So let me just check that real quick. For a second, my guys, I thought I just fake news you again, but as you can see, over here heals all allies for 15 percent attack guys i knew i wasn't freaking tripping okay oh my god i'm starting to doubt myself mr lace the skits are over here oh my god anyway anyway let's keep going all right so again mercury mage wings of karma two cost on the skill one and it deals damage magic damage to all opponents and on top of that it's also got a damage amplification so this is really interesting because there is a very very good distinction between damage amplification and defense down so guys there actually is a cap on defense down. I believe it's at about like 1.5 km defense. And so past that point, I don't think you will actually be doing any more damage. And so it's from that perspective that you do like to see the increase in damage like this one over here, because this guy is operating off of another multiplier, not dependent on that defense down. So if you do have a team that is already maxed out in that defense down, then this is still going to increase your damage dealt overall. All right, so this is actually quite a nice one because the damage amplification is on the skill one which uh for maya it's on skill two and then it looks like ashpia actually does not even have it at all however damage amplification is still just like just dps at the end of the day and so as i can see it uh the other one is that she does damage to all opponents aside from damage it doesn't look like she actually brings any utility to the table like where ashpia has the stun and we got maya with the heal and so whilst she wouldn't compare to ashpia or maya i think that they are still a cut above everyone else i would say that especially if you're starting out in the game like like very recently so in like the last few days and if you still don't have the ashpia or like the maya then you can certainly look to use her especially because we're going to be getting her evolve stones as well remember 
maxed out in event shop. However, I just saw something down here. Passive Aria after entering combat for 30 seconds increases self attack for 12.5 or 25%. I think that's kind of good. <laughs> Room for improvement, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like not really quite there. It takes 30 seconds to ramp up that passive and it's only for herself as well. Like. Oh, yikes. And so this kit actually reminds me a lot of this character over here, Anemone. So as you can see over here, increase attack by 12.5% during the first 30 seconds of combat. It's like very, very conditional, right? And I'm not saying like these skills are trash. I'm just saying that like there are very different scenarios in which each of these skills thrive. And so Anemone, for example, you can see like if you can kill or if you can finish the combat within the first 30 seconds, then this will just make it do it faster. On the other hand, we've got this one over here. So it's it takes 30 seconds to ramp up for the attack. I'm going to say that it's probably going to take about 60 seconds or more to actually be able to reap the benefits of the skill over another mage. But if we're talking from that perspective, like another mage, then I would probably still be picking Maya or Ashpia over this, unfortunately. And again, it's not that she is bad. It's that they are just really freaking good. All right. I think that's actually it. Uh, I I'm sorry that this video ran a little bit longer than usual because like there were just a lot of mechanics that I wanted to get off of my chest hopefully we won't have to cover a majority of these mechanics next time and like you guys can probably think for yourselves from now on all right and so with that being said let's start wrapping up the video and oh my god that nana art is like chef's kiss anyway secret question for you guys are you guys going to be rolling on nana or a metamorphosis i am so so keen for nana at this point i don't even have a use for her like oh my god she's just so freaking cute but of course there is something in the back of my mind that's saying oh, i need the metamorphosis i need the metamorphosis look at that pixel baby but yeah you guys let me know nana or metamorphosis and on top of that did you guys feel that my assessment was fair and if you do think that i was led astray or was wrong a little bit somewhere then let me know down in the comments below but either way if you do end up leaving a comment i would forever be grateful because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much but otherwise if this video has helped you then please consider a like and if you did like it that much or if you like me that much then please do consider a subscribe as well but otherwise that's it that's it my guys and so as nana once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye